I really love period pieces yeah. and I was so jealous to see you in this film because I very rarely see us in period pieces. And so I just wondered how you felt about that because you're in period pieces a lot. Like that seems to be your jam. Yeah, yeah no, I feel like I've done more period than I have modern somehow, but this one in particular meant much more to me because they didn't place me as the maid or the prostitute or any of the other things. And whilst there's nothing wrong in playing those parts those those parts never really develop and they're kind of just a showpiece you know she's sweet i never get to play sweet <laughs> 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 and she's kind and you know I was saying earlier you know she's the girl that the guy ends up with you know that usually doesn't go to someone who look I remember when I first got the audition through and I looked at it and I was like yeah yeah it's as if that's going to me uh, like gonna ever go to me but I was like you know what I haven't met this casting director let me do a good job and so on and so forth and then lo and behold it was actually very serious <laughs> and um and Armando offered the job to me honestly I get quite emotional thinking about this because I think it's one of the first times it's been done and I hope it will be the start of many more because I think it shows with all the casting in this film that you know we can we can tell you a human story too and <laughs> yeah it doesn't necessarily have to be about race I can just be a human in this period I love that and that's one of the things that I loved about the personal history of David Copperfield it was a multiracial cast and that one time when I was watching it was I like Oh, that person's black instead. Oh, 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 what's happening? I never once looked at it and felt some kind of way about it. I was so excited and it was refreshing and it was done extremely well. I enjoyed that so, so much. How did you feel about the colorblind casting? I was wondering before, because I'd never really seen it, how it was, how it would make me feel when I first watched it. You know, obviously Amanda went one, you know, with parents and children. It was all mix and match. And I remember watching the scene between Nikki and Muka Bird, who is um, Mrs. Steerforth, who's she's just the most incredible actress. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I noticed it, and that's it. And then I got on with the story. I, I wasn't, if I'm being honest, I wasn't like, oh, I didn't even. But how quickly I accepted that this is my reality for the next two hours. Because it's the and world's it was... reality. So I was glad that the world's reality was reflected in cinema for once. I was so excited about that, and especially yeah. in a Dickens piece, you know, because Dickens yeah. stories have no ethnicity to them. They're human stories. They're not ethnic stories. So exactly. I was excited about that. And I know that this is your film debut. Yeah. So congratulations mm -hmm. on that. You do a lot of television, Harlots, and the, is, the endless list goes on. You have done so much in such a short period of time. What was that like for you to have your film debut after doing so much television and to work with Armando? Honestly, I just couldn't believe my luck. For my first job, for it to have been with that cast and crew who were just so lovely and so welcoming and so so collaborative. No one was a diva. It was honestly one of the happiest periods of my life. And Armando is just so sweet and funny and silly. Um, and he makes you feel so comfortable because obviously I'm shitting myself, obviously, because it's my first film. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be in a scene with Tilda and Hugh and Dad. And then five minutes in, the way that everyone is, all of your preconceived ideas are you know, poof. And that doesn't always happen. You know, in TV, I've worked with some people and it's been a nightmare. There's obviously a big culture of diva-ish attitude that I think is rather unnecessary um, when it starts to affect the whole cast and crew. But this was nothing short of a dreamboat. I would love to make Copperfield too. <laughs> Basically, I just want to make Copperfield too. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I'd love to see Copperfield too. I'm down for the cause. <laughs> And just in rounding it out, my dear, what is your favorite Charles Dickens novel? Oliver Twist. Ooh, why? I don't know. I don't know whether it's because just when I was younger, that's just the book. <laughs> I don't know. I just think he's so sweet. And I love Nancy. I think she's a brilliant character. Maybe it's because I secretly want to play her. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe you should, instead of doing Copperfield 2, you should be doing a remake of Oliver Twist. I'm just saying. Who would, who would you want to play? I'll I'll direct. Girl, yeah, I'll direct. You going to bring me to London? I'll be there in a jiffy, honey. <laughs>
<laughs> I wanted to thank you for taking time out of your dinner hour to talk with me. I really appreciated it. I enjoyed you in this film so much. And I'm so happy for the beginnings of your career. And I'm looking forward to many more wonderful projects coming out of your career moving forward. Thank you. You're making me cry. All right. Oh, don't cry, girl. Don't cry. It's all good. You don't, you don't want tears salting into your dinner. <laughs> yeah. Add a bit of salt, maybe. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Bye. To keep up with The Curvy Critic, like our page here, click that subscribe button, and click that bell for notifications. Love, peace, and hair grease, y'all.